Okay, so you're definitely going to have a tough time passing algebra if you don't really understand this topic and skill. And this is a little bit of a hint here. Okay, we're going to be talking about what this thing represents. And uh, hopefully, um, you know, most of you out there watching this video or taking algebra, you know, recognize this. Okay, you're like, oh, yes, I know what this is. But uh, let's say you do recognize it. Um, but do you know how to employ it? Do you know how to use it? Now, if you don't recognize it, a couple of things here. Maybe you haven't gotten to that point in your uh, algebra course. No problems. You'll you'll be able to do, uh, know whether that's the case here in just a second as I start going over this topic. But uh, if, in fact, you um, have uh, studied this topic and you don't remember this, then, of course, you want to pay attention to this video. Okay, We don't want anybody struggling or failing algebra because they didn't understand this equation. Let's get you to understand this. And we're gonna get into this in just one second, but first, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John, I'm the founder of Tabit Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can uh, check out a link, um, or check out my math help program. I follow the link in the description of this video. But uh, whether you need to take a full online course, you can take one of mine. Or if you need assistance in a course that you're taking, my program can help you out. I have uh, full comprehensive lessons, and I teach you how to solve the most common problems that you're going to face in middle school math, high school math, and uh, even basic college math. Right? I literally solve thousands of problems all uh, via video, and um, very, very detailed. And you know, one thing that I really focus on is I try to teach math in a clear and understandable way. You know, that's, you know, students like, okay, because nothing's worse than, you know, uh, listening to someone who's boring when it comes to teaching math. Enough of you out there already struggle with the topic, you know, mathematics, and you don't like it. So we try to like make it a little bit interesting, right? So I try to use a little bit of personality, whatever I might have, a little bit of charisma to make it interesting so you can pass this stuff. Okay, now, if you are a math student, one thing you absolutely need to be doing is taking great math notes. Over decades of teaching math, one thing is uh, apparent to me, I kind of call it my golden rule of math, and that's uh, those students who take the best math notes almost always have the best math grades, and the reverse is true. Those students who think it's not important to take uh, good math notes, okay, or maybe sometimes they'll take math notes, uh, or, you know, uh, inconsistent math notes, sloppy math notes, whatever the case is, or they're convinced that they have a photographic memory and they're like, you know what, or maybe they have a great friend and one of their best friends who takes excellent math notes and they'll be like, I'm going to let that person take the notes for me and then I'll copy their notes or I'll just take their notes and I'll study their notes the night before the test. You know, you got like a whole system set up. Guess what? I've done all those mistakes and see, it doesn't work. It doesn't work is what I'm trying to get at, right? You got, you personally have to take great math notes to do well in mathematics. But, um, if you haven't been up to this point, okay, well, you might want to start considering, hey, you know, this is what you need to be doing in order to pass, you know, algebra or any math course. But uh, in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer detailed comprehensive math notes. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find a link or links to those notes in the description of this video as well. Okay, so here is the equation we're going to be talking about, or formula rather. And uh, what is this? Okay, any guesses out there? All right, so this is the uh, point-slope formula, point-slope formula. And this formula here, okay, along with this formula, okay, y equals mx plus b, which everybody kind of knows, and this is the slope-intercept, all right, slope-intercept, and this is the slope, um, point-slope, formula okay point slope formula so what is this formula used for okay well primarily it's used for answering this question all right and i'll use this little abbreviation and it's either uh you'll see these questions structured this way find the equation of a line or write the equation of a line okay so i'm going to get into this here in a second you got to be able to do two things in algebra. Well, you have to be able, you have to be able to do a lot of things, but come one of the primary things you have to be able to do is to be able to graph and write the equation of a line. So let's just quickly look at this conceptually here, and then uh, we will get into this formula. Make sure you're, that you understand it, 
so you don't struggle in algebra, okay? All right, so in algebra, uh, we're given lots of equations, you know, something like this, for example, y equals 2x plus 1, okay? And the objective is to graph this line, okay? What we call a linear equation. So, um, you know, hopefully most of you out there know, okay, this is in y equals mx plus b form. So I go to this one right here, then I use this slope up to over one, and then I graph the line, and here it is. Oh, boy, that's a terrible line. And I'm kind of freehanding here on my little computer. All right, something like that, right? Here it is. We'll just move that point over, kind of cheat a little bit. <laughs> so this would be the graph of this linear equation. We have a line, okay? So linear equation, if you just listen to that word, like, like it, it sounds like line equation, okay? So we have lines, and we have an associated equation that goes with that line, okay? So knowing how to graph a uh, line is absolutely uh, critical in algebra. You must know how to graph lines, okay? Now, this is a real basic line, but you can have lines at all different type of flavors, something like 2x plus 3y equals 8. This is a different type of um well, it's still a line, but it's in a different form as this line, okay? So here we can find the x, y intercepts, et cetera. So one of the things that we do is we take these equations and then we graph the respective lines of these equations. That's like a main skill. You need to know this. If you can't graph lines, you absolutely won't be able to pass algebra, okay? So if you haven't yet studied this, that's probably an indication that you are beginning, you know, algebra. Okay, maybe we're in the beginning uh, course of it, but this is generally taught right in the first, say, quarter of um, an algebra course. First quarter or second quarter for sure. All right, now, that's not what, what we're talking about in this video, okay? What we're going to be talking about is the following, okay? We're going to be given some information about a line, okay? Let's take this line, for example, and let's say, hmm, I have a line, and this line has a slope of 2, and it passes through the point, let's say, 1, 3, okay? So this line has a slope of 2, and it passes through the point 1, 3. What is the equation of this line? What is the equation generally in y equals mx plus b form, okay? What is the equation of a line that has a slope of 2 and it passes through a particular point? Okay, so this is what we're going to be focusing on here. Again, this is a skill uh, that if you don't know, you will really not be able to pass algebra. Okay, you got to know how to graph lines and find the equations of a line. I like to abbreviate FEL or write the equation of a line. Uh, those are two common phrases to, uh, you know, the question, the task of, you know, uh, finding the equation to a line given information about that line. Now, oftentimes you'll um, be given the slope and a point that's on that line. But another way we could see it is this way. You could say, oh, find the equation of a line that passes through the point, um, let's call this point negative 2, negative 3, okay, and 1, 3, okay? So this is another kind of flavor to this type of question. Find the equation of a line that passes through negative 2, negative 3, and 1, 3. Okay, so if you were to plot these two points on the xy plane, draw a line through it, okay, we're trying to find that y equals mx plus b that matches this, right? Something like this, for example, okay? Now, in this case, one thing that you need to be able to know how to do is to calculate the slope, all right? You got to know how to find the slope, and if you don't know how to find the slope or graph lines, uh, you're in luck, okay, because I have tons of videos on this in my algebra and pre-algebra playlist on my channel. So if you like my teaching style and the way I teach, you can just look in there and and uh, slope is another one of these er areas that, you know, students think they understand uh, and they don't understand as strongly as they, that they think do. They also make a lot of mistakes here. So you've got to be able to calculate the slope. Uh, so I'm going to assume that you know how to properly calculate the slope here, okay? Because here is what the, uh, the thing here that I really want to stress. When we are finding the equation of a line or we want to write the equation of a line, okay, we need two pieces of information, okay? So to find the equation of a line, you need two pieces of information. You need the slope, 
okay, and at least one point that's on that line. Okay, so here, for example, I have two points that are on the line, but I don't have the slope. But I could calculate the slope and then between 1, 3 and negative 2, 3, this is, I just need two points to calculate the slope. I can get that, then I would have the slope, and then I just need one point. I can either use this point or this point to have my uh, single uh, point, and then I can go from there. But just so you know, when you're writing the equation of a line or finding the equation of a line, you've at a minimum, the, the information you need is the slope and at least one point that's on that line, okay? So if you, like for example, in this particular problem, if I was to use this point, I would get the same answer uh, as if I was to use that point, okay? All right, so uh, with that being said, let's go ahead and uh, talk about the way we can now find the equation of a line. So let's uh, talk about this problem here. So let's find the equation of a line Okay, that has a slope of 2 and passes to the point 1, 3. Now you have two options here. Okay, you could use the slope intercept formula. Okay, that's this guy right here. And this is a good formula, it comes in handy uh, for a lot of things. Okay, and you definitely need to know it. But this, in my opinion, and this is over a long time of teaching mathematics and algebra, this is the better formula to know okay so you need to know both but this is kind of like my go-to guy right here okay so this is the point slope formula all right so let's talk about how to use this so we can find the equation of a line all right okay so like with anything with a formula we just need to know you know what do we plug in okay well in this formula we have y1 you know that tends to confuse students like what's this and what's this x1 well i'm going to explain this to you all right so m is obviously the slope so what i'm circling here is the is uh the part of the formula where we're going to plug in values okay so m is the slope and of course we have m equals two so we'll be plugging in a two right there now the y1 we're going to plug in and the x1 right here are these are our plug in spots Okay, we're going to be plugging in. Now, I have the point one three, one three. Remember, I told you to find the equation of a line, you need the slope and a point that's on the line. Okay, so here I have the slope. And right here, this one, okay, this is an x, y ordered pair. Okay, but this one, okay, is our x1, and this three is our y1. So we're going to be plugging in three right there. Our slope is 2, and then right here, this x1, we'll be plugging in 1, okay? And then from there, we'll just go ahead and uh, uh, simplify this so we can have ourselves a nice uh, equation in y equals mx plus b form. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this now. All right, so we're going to go y minus our y1 is 3, okay? So remember, this is our x and our y right there, and this is x1, y1, okay? So our three will be right there, all right? Equals, now I could use parentheses, and you should use parentheses, because if you had a negative three, this would definitely change uh, the problem. So let me use parentheses, because I, I'm a big stickler on that, and I don't want to go against my uh, advice to always use parentheses when you're plugging in values. So let's plug in. Uh, this y1 with a uh, uh, parenthesis. Okay, we'll plug in three inside of the parentheses like this. Now our m is two, so we'll do that like that, times x minus or x1 is one. All right, and there we go. Okay, now you know over time when you get comfortable and you're better at it, you could be like, okay, that's just y minus three equals. 2 times x minus 1. Yes, you could do that. Uh, however, you run the risk of making errors with these positive and negative values. So always use parentheses. It's really uh, in, uh, important that you do so, getting into the habit, because it uh, will help you avoid making errors. Now, at this point, I'm looking to see, all right, do I have any negative values here that I need to change, like a negative of a negative. For example, if it was y minus a negative 3, let's say this was a negative 3, then I would have to change this to y plus 3. That's not the case, so I can just leave this as y minus 3 is equal to 2 times x minus 1, okay? 
All right, so what do I do here uh, next? Well, what you're gonna do is the distributor property, okay? And then if this this technique, you just do this the same thing over and over again, right? So once you, this once you know this procedure, you do it basically for all problems. So this is gonna be two times x and two times this one. So this is y minus three is equal to two x minus two, okay? Again, make sure you, you know how to use the distributor property. But what we're doing here really is solving for y. We want this line in y equals mx plus b form, okay? So to solve for y now, we're almost there. I simply just have two add three to both sides of the equation. And look right here, what we have, this goes away. I get y equals two x plus one. And there you go, okay? So y equals 2x plus 1 is my answer. This is the line, okay? This is the linear equation that has a slope of 2, okay? It has a slope of 2 and passes to the point 1, 3, okay? Now, how could I check this? Uh, how could I verify that it passes to the point 1, 3? Well, let's just do a quick check here. Uh, here's my equation, y equals 2x plus 1. Anytime you want to check that a point is on a line, plug in uh, the value for uh, this xy um, values into the equation. If the left equals the right, then you're good to go. All right, so what is y? Well, y is 3. Okay, so we'll plug that in. And what is x? It's 1. Okay, so that's going to be 2 times 1. Okay, and we're placing the x with 1, placing the y with 3, plus 1. So let's see if the left equals the right. 3 equals 2 times 1 is 2 plus 1. 3 equals 3. That is true. So we're good to go. We give ourselves a smiley face. We definitely found the equation of uh, the information here, right? So given um, a line, a mystery line, has a slope of 2 and passes to the point 1, 3. What is that line? Well, we were able to find it using our nice uh, point slope formula. Okay, again, you could, uh, you could have used this formula, but this is not as uh, a direct way, okay? And then there's other issues that come up with using this form. But you need to you need to know the slope-intercept formula. This comes up handy as well. So I'm not discounting this guy, but this guy is awesome, all right? And the bottom line is this, okay? If you uh, are going to really pass algebra, you need to know how to graph lines and find the equations of lines. Just no way around it, okay? And, uh, you know, if this video was like, hmm, Oh, very informative to you if you're like, okay, now I get it, all right? I was struggling with this. Or maybe you um, you have not yet studied this in algebra. Don't worry about it. And when you do study it, you'll probably be able to teach your teacher. You'll be like, hey, teacher, this is how you do it. Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. They'll be like, oh, my goodness. They'll give you this look. They'll be like, wow, you are so awesome. Why don't you take the rest of the year off? Here's an A plus, 100%. You know, hey, uh, or maybe they'll hire you as your uh, assistant math teacher in class. I used to have some like awesome uh, students that would just like, you know, love math so much. You can almost use them as little like tutors and stuff inside the classroom because they just know it so well. Uh, but that could be you, right? I mean, these videos and stuff, you know, are a lot of in uh, instruction. I mean, on YouTube, there's so many places to find information these days. It's it's almost like information overload. So you got to be careful as, as good as, you know, it is in terms of, um, you know, using the internet or YouTube to find information. Got to be careful because you got to be, you got to consider who you are listening to, Okay. For me, you know that I've been teaching the subject. I'm a bona fide, legitimate uh, math teacher. I have a degree in math, master's degree, but that's not what makes me a good math teacher. Years and decades of teaching math, just knowing this stuff is what I think makes me a pretty effective math teacher. So in some way, if you found this video helpful or if you enjoyed it, please consider smashing that like button. I would enjoy that. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I am uh, posting new math content all the time. I've already been on YouTube for 10 plus years. I have hundreds and hundreds of videos, basic math to advanced math on my channel, organized various playlists, all there for you. Obviously, I'm obsessed with teaching math, and I will continue to do so as long as I can. But if you want my best uh, uh, work, just follow those links in the description of this video. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.